an inability to let them go. If God is calling them somewhere and you're saying, no, I can't let you go, or mentally, emotionally, willfully, I'm just not letting them go. If my kids want to leave and get married and I can't let them go because I've got an ungodly soul tie, because they're adults, they can do what they want to do. If I can't let them go, then I've got an ungodly soul tie with that person, with my child. Playing their image or voice or scent over and over and over in your mind. Sometimes we smell something and it, it reminds me of some date that I had. You know, if that kind of thing occurs, um, or you hear some tone or some voice and you go, wow, um, that, you know, that's exactly what's playing over and over and over in my mind, and, and, I, and I hear it, and I'm conscious of it, and I've got ungodly soul ties when, when it comes to those kind of things. Or there's particular images. Anything I do that allows me to be controlled by the thoughts of someone in the past, I need to break that that soul time. God has something freeing in, in, in mind for us. He doesn't want us to be controlled by somebody else. Unhealthy dependence or dominance, bad company corrupts good morals. Anything that is corrupting your morals, anything that could potentially corrupt your morals, um, is an ungodly relationship, ungodly soul tie. Um, and we need to break those soul ties, get rid of those soul ties, just real quickly, you'll see this in, in godly versus ungodly relationships. If it's a godly relationship, you're going to experience love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and meekness and self-control. And you're going to experience that in a godly relationship. Look and see in godly relationships if this kind of thing is occurring. But if this is occurring in your relationships, if, this, if hatred and manipulation is occurring, and, or, you know, somebody says, well, I'm not going to like you if you don't do thus and such for me. Or, well, however they're trying to manipulate you. There's no health in manipulation. You don't feel good. <laughs> You're not feeling love when somebody's manipulating you. You just feel used. And so that's, not, that's an ungodly relationship. Instead of having joy, you've got unhappiness or depression and as a result of that relationship. If that's, if that's going on, it's an ungodly relationship. If you're feeling anger, strife, and unrest mm -hmm. instead of peace, then you're involved in an ungodly relationship. If it's constantly anger and strife and bitterness and all this stuff going back and forth, there's something wrong in that relationship. Um, if you're selfish or they're selfish or impatient with you, then it's ungodly relationship. Rude or demeaning. It's not the right kind of godly relationship that God wants. Harsh, threatening, or controlling. Unreliable or somebody cheating on you instead of being faithful. Prideful or arrogant. There are areas in our lives that we need to get rid of. We need to get rid of the soul ties that keeps us into any... Even godly people can have ungodly aspects of our relationships. And I look back, and, I, and I'm, as I was pondering this whole concept of soul ties, I started to look back at when did I start to have some of this occur? When did, why is it that this particular thing has followed me for so many years? Why is it that I see a, a pattern in my life, in some area of, of this, that's caused me to want to pick on somebody or caused me to want to be rude or demeaning? What is that in my life, and where did that start? What caused that? And in many cases, most cases, we'll go back to when something occurred a long time ago and we participated in it and it's followed us all these times, all these years. And all of a sudden, we're now tied to something that could have occurred many years ago. 
prideful or arrogant, or you do what pleases you and forget about the other person. Um, so these are all ungodly aspects of relationships. God doesn't want us to have these kind of soul ties. The ungodly soul ties, the things that in your mind, even as, as we've been speaking this morning, the things in your mind that have come up that goes, you know what, I still have a problem with this kind of thing. And I realize, when I really search my heart, that there's something way back when is when it started. And I fell into agreement with that. My mind fell into agreement with it. My will chose to participate in it. My, I got emotionally involved in it, and it's never been broken off of me. It's, it's been there for all these years. And God is in the process. He's saying, you don't have to carry that because Jesus came to set you free. Amen. Just because just because you got saved and God has a plan for you and he, he's got a place for you in heaven, That's right. there's still this stuff that sometimes lingers on with us. <laughs> and, you, and when you're sitting there thinking about it and letting the Spirit search our hearts, and go, what God, what did, what caused this in my life? You know, what made me be so that I I am so reliant upon that person's happiness? And and I can't even be happy unless that person's happy. Mm-hmm. That's an ungodly soul tie. Right. right? And so so these kinds of things, there's something that occurred back at some point that God wants to say, break it off Amen. through the power of the Holy Spirit, He wants to break it off of us. To such a degree that you're free from that thing, and now you can walk in freedom of God, with with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. That's right. So let's just pray. Let's just bow your heads right now, and let the Holy Spirit right now just say to you, you know, this particular area just isn't right. And as and as and as we've been speaking this morning, we realize that there's something in my life that the Holy Spirit's shown us. Where I've got an ungodly soul tie. And it's actually changed the way I view people the way I react to people, the way I act with people. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, right now for pointing those things out to us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for for revealing to us areas in our lives where we've had ungodly soul ties. I thank you, God, that you want to break these ungodly soul ties so that we're not chained to any kind of addictions or any kind of thought patterns that, that hold us to some relationship or person or thing or experience from the past, but you want to break it off right now in Jesus' name. So right now, as everybody, as the Holy Spirit has revealed anything to you, let just pray this prayer with me. Father God, Father God in Jesus' name, in Jesus name, I humbly ask you to forgive me and cleanse me of the sin of fornication, the sin of ungodly soul ties, in whatever area that you've just revealed to me. I acknowledge the sin. I forsake it completely. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you that you want to break it off of me. And Lord God, I come before your throne of grace. Covered by the shed blood of your son Jesus Christ. Covered by the shed blood of your son Jesus Christ. I ask you in, to cut any and all ungodly soul ties. I ask you to cut any and all ungodly soul ties. Between myself and any other person that I've had these soul ties with. And any other person I've had these soul ties with. And as, and as we've said that, Lord, there are certain people that have come to mind that I'm asking you to break this off of me. 
I'm asking you, God, that you would come, and as these people's faces are even coming into my mind right now, that, God, you would break the soul ties and penetrate this soul tie so that the soul tie is gone from this point on. So, Father God, right now, we break the path, we, in the power of Jesus Christ, we break these soul ties in Jesus' name. Anybody that we've had inappropriate relationships with, sexual relationships, fantasies, we break their power over you right now in Jesus' name. Father, we take, we take the sword of the Holy Spirit and separate the human spirit with the spirits of any of those people that we've, ha we've come into contact with and have these soul ties with. Cleanse us right now, Jesus, <coughs> from all inappropriate soul ties. I now command any and all powers, principalities, and spiritual forces from this present darkness which may have had access to me through these soul ties or have, that have been assigned to me because I've allowed soul ties in my life. Yes. I command them right now in the name of Jesus to be gone. To be gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to wherever Christ tells you to go by the power of the Holy Spirit and never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Jesus' name, I ask you to shut every door yes. right now, Lord. Shut, it. Oh, that's right. shut every door. I want nothing to do with it any longer. Yes. That's right. It's not going to be a point where I have chained to something of the past any longer. That's right. I'm shutting the door, and I'm asking you, God, to be the guard of the door. Yes. I'm asking you to be the one who opens the door when somebody comes and tries to knock on the door. And I, I pray, God, right now, that your Holy Spirit fill every person up. That God, these memories, these, these soul ties, that God, you would just free them up right now. Fill them up, Lord, right now with That's your right. Holy Spirit. Right. Fill them up with your truth of how much you love them. They don't need these soul ties. Fill them up, God, right now, we pray in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, that these soul ties are broken. We thank you, God, for the joy and love that you have for us. Yes. And we receive it right now in the name of Jesus That's Christ. Right. Thank you, God. Everyone who wants to say amen, raise your hands and just say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your freedom. Thank you, God, for breaking these chains. Thank you, God, for your freedom and for the power of Jesus Christ. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. No longer chains. That's right. In Jesus' name. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> you have the right to praise him for so much. That's right. That's right. Mm. <laughs> um, we're going to take communion, and as we take communion, <laughs> you know, we, we do this in remembrance of him. But you know what he did? He set you free. And he's setting you free. Yes. He's making you free. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. What you did on the cross, is unbelievable. The fact that we can appropriate what you did on the cross in our lives today to help us be set free. So that we can have the kind of relationships, the kind of godly relationships that you want us to have and be able to participate in a whole new realm, in the spiritual realm. It's just unbelievable what Jesus did for us. We thank you, God, for everything you've done.